Yeah, they can be watching the class from there because it's going to be live streaming. Okay, I'm just making sure the connection is there before we start. Setting up your meeting for YouTube. So that's how it's going to be every week. Okay, so if you didn't make it to the class, they so can be, yeah. Yeah, they can be watching the class from there because it's going to be live streaming. Okay? Exactly. Sure the connection is there before we start. Exactly. So just make sure that you uh, actually tell them to join on the YouTube page so they can actually watch us. Okay. One moment, full screen view. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. All right. So there's a, a few seconds of delay. If I'm not mistaken, it's 30 seconds delay between uh, the YouTube and the Zoom. But it's fine. You can still um, you can still watch. And I hope everybody can hear me there. It's the first time I'm testing this, so hope it works. And hope we'll still have as much fun. All right, let's give it another two minutes and uh, we're gonna start. Okay, good. One more minute so that I can answer. Okay, perfect. Okay. Hello, everyone. Okay, good. So, um, all right. So I think we can start and um, I'm really, really, <laughs> I look like I'm completely answering to everyone. I look like a freak. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. I'm super, super thrilled um, to be again joining you all in, um, in a class and having you come in my humble studio and enjoy two hours of very fun painting. As you know, we're going to be painting this uh, beautiful moonlit scenery today. I promise you to make it as easy as possible for everyone to create it as close as possible to this. And if it doesn't look the same, it's fine. I forgot to introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Angela and I'm the uh, owner and only artist of the Let's Paint Now program. Um, if you don't know us yet, uh, you can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, and we're now just recently on YouTube. We just launched our channel. So every class is going to be showcased on Zoom for the 100 first participants every week. So our classes are free up until um, the end of Ramadan. So you will be able to watch every class for free 
um, through the Zoom class, which I can have a direct interaction with you and answer to questions and chat. On the right side, there's a little chat box we can use to talk with each other. Um, but at the same time, it can only take 100 people in the room. And I've already upgraded the account to be able to receive 100 people, or else it was 20 people in the room. And so uh, for everyone else that cannot join us on Zoom and you know people that wanna join, please guide them through our YouTube channel. I'm gonna be um, putting the link right now to you of where I am streaming on, uh, on uh, YouTube. So everyone else can join us on that page. Okay, I'm just gonna put the chat right here. Hello, hello everyone. I'm reading your messages, yeah, hi. <laughs> So basically, um, yeah, this is the link. Okay, cool. So basically we're in for um, a two hour ride and it's going to be a fun class, I promise you. And while you're actually doing the class, I would like you to take pictures of yourselves or at the painting itself, because I cannot see the process. We used to run live classes, but since it's digital, I want you to be taking pictures so that I can see how your painting evolved and grew into becoming uh, the final result that you'll be sending me. Also, don't forget to post these pictures on our Instagram or Facebook page. Instagram would be better and you can tag us either uh, by tagging us or um, by adding our name in the hashtag. So let's paint now on both and I will be seeing them and I'll be reposting them on our page. One thing also that's really cool is once I gather all your paintings at the end of the class, I create an album in Facebook. So you don't see necessarily what every participant is doing, but what you can do is you can go on Facebook and watch uh, the, the other participants' um, creations. And that would be a fun way for you to be part of the community and see what others has, have also created. And uh, that's pretty much it. I think I've said it all. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. And one last thing for the technical aspect of things, because we only have two hours to complete the painting, I cannot have everybody talk. So I have muted you all. So you won't be able to speak which is too bad for you, but it's good for me so I can keep on talking nonstop. <laughs> but uh, if you have anything to tell me, any question, I have a chat window on the right, which I'll be opening and I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be sending it to, um, to everyone. Okay, I'll be sending it to everyone since I sent it privately. So I'm gonna do it everyone in the meeting room. And I just sent right now the link to everyone. So you can all have access and Send, send, it, send it to your friends or share it to everyone you know wants to assess it. So we're going to start. Um, do I have one last thing to tell you before we start? Did I say everything? I have a lot of people writing messages to me, but I'll answer it in a bit. Um, I think I've covered everything. Um, next week's painting is going to be uh, related on Mother's Day. So it's going to be I Love You Mama. That's the theme. And at the end of the class, you'll also be uh, receiving a thank you form, a thank you letter, which will also guide you to the next class painting. If you wanna register, the link will be there to register to this coming class. And you'll also get a feedback form to leave me your feedback if you liked it, found it hard, it was easy and et cetera. So we can go over that as well. All right, so we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. So like I've told you uh, in the material section, I was talking about having two brushes, one small and one big. But what would also be cool is uh, if you have three different sizes for the coming class. So these are the brushes that I usually use. Small, my small brush is usually a round one. This is the one, a medium one and a large one. A large one is usually being used for big surfaces. The medium one uh, for medium surfaces and the small one is what I use for the details. I tend to call them Papa, Mama and Baby Bear. So when I say take the Papa, you go and grab the big brush. Take Mama Bear is the medium brush and Baby Bear is the baby brush. So that's the way I call them. You can call them small, medium, large, but I'm gonna call them Mama, Papa and Baby. All right, cool. Another thing that I do before starting the painting, and I'm gonna take you on the other view of the camera, is I use, this is the painting, is that I use uh, washi tape. I don't know if you know what washi tapes are. They're amazing tapes and very fun and colorful. 
I use a washi tape just like this one, which doesn't tear the paper apart. It's really cool. It's made out of paper and I have tons of these and you can find them everywhere in every store. So these washi tapes can actually be, um, can actually be useful not to tear the paper. So I use that to cover the, all the sides of my, um, of my canvas and I cover half of it in half out so that I, once I'm done with the painting and I remove it, it looks like a finished, um, finished result. Just give me one moment. I just want to uh, message. Uh, okay. All right, perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, uh, in order to start the class, I'm gonna ask you to look at this painting for a moment, okay? So we have the brushes, sorry, we have the brushes, we have the water, and we also will use a towel. I have a towel right here, it's my best friend. So it's, uh, it's used um, at all times to have the water, excess of water or paint dried up. And I have a paper palette, uh, I've used, half of it so we can actually continue using the rest of uh, the palette. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do right now. We're going to be uh, thinking of how to break the painting down, okay? So if you actually think of how this is made, there's two layers to it, okay? There's the background layer, which is the layer that has all these gradients and the moon and also the, the forest soil part. So that is one level. But then what we will be doing, we will be planting these trees and adding the foliage in the upper part. So this, so this leaves, these red leaves look really nice and vibrant, okay? So this is how I'm going to be uh, managing the breakdown of the painting. Okay, let's just make one more person. Just give me one minute if you can. What we're going to do first is put all the brushes in the water and make sure that they're washing their faces, okay? So plunge all the water, all the brushes in the water and I'll be quickly, uh, replying to everyone that is trying to access. Quickly answering, and it is not working. Okay, they're telling me, okay. Okay, I know it should be working. I think it's fine. It's going to be probably buffering a bit. Okay. Let's just uh... all right. Okay, great. So have you put them in the water? Have you got them awake? Good, you did. Okay, it's like if you wake up in the morning and you want to uh, wash your face, that's the same thing you need to do with your brushes, okay? So you need to wash the brush face so that you make sure that um, the brush can be useful. And the thing is that every time you finish a painting, you make sure to wash also the brushes so that the hair of the brush don't get stuck and are easy to use for the second painting. So we're going to start with this area, which is the moon one, okay? So we're gonna use the Papa Bear brush, which is the biggest brush, okay? So we're gonna be using that brush. So make sure you put it in the water, remove the excess of water and leave him for one minute on the side. I'm gonna remove this. What are the colors that we will be using today? We're going to be using yellow. So make sure you, use, you put some yellow on your palette. We'll be using some yellow and some blue as a start, okay? So I'm gonna pour some blue and some yellow as a start, not the red one. So just do the same. And we're gonna then roll the, uh, the other colors. All right, let's do this. So I have some yellow here and some blue right there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some yellow with my big brush, okay? So I'm kind of dipping it both sides in the yellow. And I will look at my canvas. And if you see the canvas, if you have to break the canvas into three parts, then one third of the canvas down there is going to be the ground, the, the ground of the forest. So we're going to be tracing a line and it's okay to do it in yellow anyway, it won't show at the end. So make it this nice line in yellow, just to trace this and be like, this is what is going to be at the bottom of the painting. So the soil area. 
everything up there is going to be our beautiful sunset. Once we're done with that, what is the next step? We will be using either the small or the medium brush to create the moon. So the moon is made out of two curvy lines. So you have to think of it as if it's at the center of your painting. So first is you have to, to do like a letter C, you know, like in the alphabet, you write the letter C. You have to curve the line and make a nice big capital letter C, okay? That's the first step of it. Now, the second one would be to do another letter C, but smaller one, and that brings corner to corner the points of the moon. Look at that. And there you have a nice moon shape by using the white color of the canvas, which will actually remain white because we want it to be white because it's the light of the moon, okay? Hope you're all able to do this. So there you go. This is how we will have the shape of the moon right there. What we will do next, I, ha I forgot to add some white, but it would be good if you also have a little bit of white. It helps you cre create create this nice lighter shape, but I'm going to use the white right now. So I'm taking my medium sized brush. So you can take either the big one or the medium one. Okay. And we will with white paint. Okay. We've done the lines in yellow. I know, but with white paint, we're going to start doing a, a gradient that goes from the yellow that I've put around the moon all the way to the dark blue on the corners. So I will build gradually by circular shapes from the white yellowish gradient here to a darker shade of lime green all the way to the blue black around there. So what I will do right now is I will treat I will create some nice little lines by dab dabbing the paint around the moon. Okay, so I'm going to build this gradient. It's not going to happen very quickly. So around the moon, obviously, we said it's yellow. So you can cover all the area around the moon with the yellow paint. This is how it rolls. I'm going to nicely start going around the moon area. OK. I'm going to cover it all with white, oh, sorry, with the yellow paint. And just try to rotate around the moon, like nice little strokes like this just by being careful and keeping this area, that is the moon area, completely clean, okay? So start building that around it. Once this is cool and you kind of like it, that's when we can start going bigger with, um, with, the, with the gradient. All right, so I'm gonna quickly resume back for people that don't know how we did this. We first trace the line that kind of defines the border between the soil and the upper part. Then the second thing uh, that we're going to do is we're gonna trace the moon. And how do we do the moon? We wrote the capital letter C twice. So we did one big letter C and another smaller one letter C that allows us to connect point to point all the paint that we had in the yellow area. Then what we're going to do is build this gradient slowly, slowly around it. So I've advised to use a whitish yellow around the moon, just like this, which I'm redoing right now with a bit of white because we want it to be really light around the moon, okay? Yellow is nice because it kind of sets the tone, but then white is really, really what we need because we want the gradient to be as strong as possible from the moon to the borders. So I'm going over that yellow that I've placed, but with the white paint this time to kind of reinforce the, the light around the moon, okay? And don't go quickly on building this gradient because in any cases, we're gonna go and become really dark shade of blue and lime green. So don't worry too much. So the way I'm doing the strokes is, is the same way that I actually wrote the letter C, but by doing little, you know, like little dab dabs of paint, but all around it, like gradually, gradually building it around it. The brush uh, using acrylic has always to be damp. So you have to make sure that it's wet and it has enough load of water. So not too dry and not too watery so that it kind of blends the colors together or else the paint is going to be dismantled and detached. All right. Once you're happy with the yellow shade that you've put, okay, 
we can start kind of adding another shade of blue in it. Okay, hold on. Just wait for the information. Blue is a very, very powerful color. Okay, look at that. It already looks like it's a powerful guy. What we want to do when we want to blend the colors together, we don't want the blue to make our yellow green very fast. So what we need to do is to go really easy with the brush on the blue, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I mean by really easy. So you're gonna grab with the tip of your brush, like very tiny amount of blue, just like this. Not all of it, just like this, okay? I barely have blue on my brush, do you all see? Yeah. And then at one corner of your palette, you're going to grab yellow and make this lime green, which is the lime green that we are going to be using all around the moon, okay? So I'm creating this color on the side so that I'm sure I have enough of it and that I'm happy with the shade. Okay, there you go. Okay. I actually love this color. It's one of my favorite colors in the world. There you go. If you want it to be a bit lighter, you can create it again, but then you know that the blue is not going to take over the shade and you're not gonna have too much of it. Okay, now I'm happy with my shade of lime green. Okay, what I will do, I'll wash my brush to remove the excess of paint and grab again a little amount of that green and start blending it in with the yellow, okay? How do we blend colors together? Colors do blend together with either water or white paint. Water is the perfect blender blending agent in the world. So if you feel that they're not blending well, it means you need to go grab more water, clean the brush, grab more water and go over the shades of color together. Again, I'm doing these little strokes Okay, right here, I got too close to the yellow with my lime green. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna wash my brush, remove the green color from it, grab some yellow, I grab again some yellow, and I go over this lime green to push the guy back, to push him back out, okay? This is what I will do. I'll go back with my circles with the yellow in my hand, and in that way, I will have kind of pushed back on the lime green. There you go, he moved backwards. Great, now I'm happy. And in the same way that we started with the lime green, you're gonna go all around it, all around the canvas. One thing you're gonna be taking care of and making sure that it happens great smoothly is when you reach at the bottom of this moon area, you have to make the strokes really thin because we also really want to keep this yellow area underneath the moon, okay? So we don't want it to be too dark very quickly. So there you go. I'm making it very thin. It's as if the whole gradient became like a hamburger smash. So I'm going all around it. I'm placing the green first, huh? as you can see. I place the green first where I want it to be. And then I go grab my yellow and I blend it together. I blend them together. I go back on the border. So when you're not happy with the blending and you feel like there's a stroke between the two colors, the best way to do this is to um, go back, wash the brush, grab the lightest color of the two and go over this border with some water. It's gonna for sure blend it and make it very, very smooth just like I did right now. And so you constantly build it all around the moon. See, I'm going over the gradient right here and making sure that it's smooth. Again, right here, the green got a bit too close. So I'm gonna go back, grab some lime green and white, sorry, some yellow and white and go over the border to make sure that the light is still on right there, okay? And so you're gonna continue and building it um, and you're gonna build it all the way to the top, okay? So I'm gonna continue and push the lime green darker and darker. So the one that I have now doesn't necessarily need to have any more yellow because we're kind of reaching the, the outer side of the circle. So there you go. And then you can really go all the way to the corners, just like this. I'm a bit running out of this lime green, but it's okay because it's not that difficult to recreate. I'm gonna create some more with the yellow I have right here. I might be adding a bit more yellow because it's, it's 
kind of not enough. Oops. Okay. Now add more yellow. Don't forget to take very little of that blue. Okay. And there you go. Again, you do like nice little lines. And as you're moving up, you're slowly, slowly advised to add more blue. Okay. So the gradient, the level of blue gets intensified as you reach the borderline. So don't worry too much about adding blue because what's going to happen at the end, look at that. Look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and grab blue straight from the palette and you put the blue on the corner of your painting. So you know that at the end, this is where you're going to go at a, as, as a final color. So this can give you like a mark that this is the shade of my lightest blue at the border. And I can even cover all of it because I'm not really far with my gradient. I'm almost there. And since my brush is completely loaded, I can quickly do a little corner exercise, but don't go too much down, yeah? I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna blend these guys together. Don't go too down, because it's really, really dark as a shade. Okay. Now, when I reach the green, what happens? I wash my brush, always wash your brush, and take the lightest one of the two shades. In this case, it's going to be the lime green because he's the lightest one of the two. And with the lime green, I'm going to go over the border. And that's how these two colors are going to become friends and start blending together. So it's really like an, a test of for the eyes, a test for the colors. It's a challenge of how to blend things perfectly so they look like they're really, really uh, in, in tune with each other. So there you go. I'm pushing even my gradient a bit at the bottom of the canvas. So just to have a mini dark corner here as well. I'm doing it on this side, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to push this guy a bit right here. Great. So again, with water and a bit paint, I'm blending them together just to make sure that my gradient is perfect and it goes really smoothly from one color to the other. Just make sure not to have an excess of water because excess of water tends to remove the paint from the canvas, okay? So just make sure that this doesn't happen because you really want the paint you're putting to stay there because it's nice. Okay, there you go. It blends really nicely. That's the cool thing with acrylics. So we're gonna continue and do the same here. Grab some more lime green and blend these guys together. There's a little gap right there. Again, smoothly moving my brush left and right, trying to kind of blend everyone together. You can feel the paint is already starting to get dry, so you always constantly have to go back and add more water, okay? You can also see the granulations on the paper. It means that the paint is too dry and it's kind of suffering to blend in. So bring in more water and then you're good to go. Okay, I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna bring the borders of the blue on the corner, on the right corner. We can even lower a little bit the line of this border so we can actually push this line a little bit lower so that we have access to putting a nice little bluish corner right here. You can do the same on this side. It's just about having a good gradient, a good contrast between the blue all the way to the, to the yellow. Okay, you're gonna see how all this is gonna come to life once we have the, the trees planted. So here my gradient also is not super duper smooth. What I will do, I'm gonna go back to my, now you know, lightest shade and blend them together just like this. I go over the border several times with a bit of water and then I'm sure kind of having them blend. What I can do here, I can again go um, over this and blend it in. I'm gonna do another small exercise with you. If you ever wanna blend it even more, I'm gonna show you a small technique which can completely bring these guys together. It's okay if the line is not straight, by the way. If you ever worried about the line being straight, do not worry. It's very easy to fix that. No, this blue is going up. That is not gonna happen. So I'm gonna go with clean water and with some 
white paint pushing back down exactly like that okay okay i'm kind of happy with what i have as a gradient but there's one thing that i want to do in order to kind of add this final smoothening effect on everything okay i'm going to go back and add a bit of white on my palette and what i will do and i don't know if your papers can actually hold doing that so maybe your paper is kind of too thin so you might not be able to do it mine is medium thin but if you create a bit of lime green light light sorry 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 starting all over again if you create a little bit of light yellow so i added white and yellow together you can again go over this gradient but with with a bit of water and kind of push the white further up so if you feel that the green kind of came too much down you're going to go with the yellow and the white together and pull every everybody more up. So you got you go lightly, not too strong. Huh? You go lightly on top of the colors that we put, and just in the middle, okay, just to add a bit of swag to the gradient. You go up all the way on your gradient. This is kind of going to blend everything together nicely. But there's absolutely no color other than white and and water. I added a bit of yellow at the beginning, but you just need to think that you're blending things together rather than adding a new color okay and my 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 concern was i feel my lime green is coming too much in so i need to kind of push the lights all the way to the top i can also do the same thing here on the border so i'm going to go again with my white it literally has a very yellowy light yellowy shade but barely barely yellow it's just to keep in line with the first color that we added and i'm going to push back on the screen but also I'm blending colors in. So it's like I'm doing two things at once. Light is being pushed out and blend is happening very smoothly. So you can see already that the blend becomes way smoother. But one thing you, you, you have to be really careful about is once you touch the blue area, which I just did right now, once you touch the blue area, you have to absolutely go and wash your brush and not go back with this on the yellow or else you're going to get a green area. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So very carefully push the white out. And there you go with a bit of yellow. I'm gonna push this guy out and it helps me blend the colors in. You might wanna do this or not. It's literally up to you. And it also depends on what material you're using and whether it allows you to kind of do this or not. Cause for my end, it's literally borderline cause my paper is not that thick. So it might, it, it might wobble a bit and you don't want the paper to be tearing. So just, it's just limit, limit, okay? Okay, there you go. I think I'm really happy with my gradient right now and I'm ready to move forward in, I'm just gonna check if, um, okay, explain the green and what comes after the green, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna slow it down. I don't know if I did from the moment you asked. Okay, I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna explain again what we did. We did a gradient. At first, we started with the moon shape, okay? We traced the letter C twice. A big letter C and a smaller letter C that allows us to connect point by point the two sides, the two little tips of the moon. Once we were done with that, we started filling in the area around the moon with some yellow paint, okay? And so with circular movement of the hand, we kind of grew bigger and bigger on the yellow area. Our yellow had always a bit of white in it so that it remains intense as a yellow. So we constantly were doing circular lines around the moon, just like this, okay? We're building it around, uh, around the moon. Once we were happy with how much yellow we added, we said, okay, we're gonna add the green area now. This is the right time to do that. But how do we make this lime green? We took it on the side and we kind of baked it or we cooked the recipe of the lime green here on the side. How do we make the lime green? We blended yellow and a very, very small amount of blue, okay? Why? Because blue is really powerful as a color. And if you put too much of it, what happens? It kind of takes over and it gives you this very dark shade of blue very quickly. And we don't want that because we want to have a very light shade of, of green. 
So what we did, we kind of cooked our little lime green on the side and we started adding it on the yellow. Again, with a circular line. So we build it slowly to get bigger. And from the yellow, we move to the lime green. Once the lime green was big enough, which was approximately um, this area, we started adding a darker shade of green. How did we do that? Adding more blue to the color. So we grabbed a bit more of the blue color that we had in the green, and we started getting darker and darker with the shades of the green. Just great, great, gradually adding the blue allows you to have control over the situation and not go like very dark very quickly. Okay, I'm kind of showing you also while I'm doing it, I'm repainting also on top of what I just did. So adding more blue allowed us to kind of reach the final shade of the gradient for the background all the way to the corner. So we pushed that gradient all the way to the corner of the canvas. So we reached here with a very, very intense dark blue, which is where we wanted to reach, okay? And then you stop there. What small detail that I mentioned a while ago is that the same gradient happened at the bottom of our canvas. So the same gradient we had on top was literally being mimicked at the bottom of the canvas. So we're having the same kind of gradient from yellow all the way to the dark blue on the little corners of our painting. So we have the same situation happening on top and at the bottom. All right, I hope I answered all your questions. Okay, I'm just gonna check now if anyone has any more questions. It's too fast. Okay, I'm gonna slow down a bit. I'm gonna wait. Yeah, yeah, I will slow down. I will wait a bit for you guys to achieve this area and I'm gonna check on you and see and see where you're at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me quickly see what's going on. Okay. If you have any questions, please type it on, um, on the little window to the right side so I can make sure I answer all your questions. Do we do it on a canvas or paper? Actually, ideally, I'm answering questions on YouTube. Ideally, we're, it's better to do it on canvas if you have canvas, but you can also use, um, you can also use paper. Canvas is obviously ideal, uh, but we might not all have um, canvases at home. Um, but what, what is really cool is that it allows you, to, acrylic allows you to look really nice, whether it's on, uh, on canvas or on paper. As long as the paper is thick enough and you can have uh, enough buffer to, to make the, the color blend together, you're good to go. All right, I can see you really all work very nicely. Cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk what the next steps are, okay? Until you're done with the, with the, with the gradients. What we will be doing next um, is creating this soil area, the bottom area of the painting, okay? As you can see, it's made out of a dark green shade, okay? But also has little highlights of colors, okay? I'm gonna go back to my other view. So it does have how to blend green with blue. I'll answer to you right now. So the green that we were building here all the way to this area, we just added more blue to it basically to go to a completely pure blue. It just keep on adding the blue, keep on adding the blue. There's no other technique to it. And what I personally did is instead of doing the gradient directly, at some point with my dark green, I stopped it and I went and I grabbed blue straight from my palette and I started putting the blue on the corners, on the four corners of the canvas. Once you do that, you kind of know where you're going. You kind of know where your gradient is going to lead you. So you know that you're going from this yellow to this green and then you're going to this blue. So you kind of know the target and it gives you a, a perspective of where you're going, okay? So what we're going to be doing now is, um, 
Yeah. Okay. A little bit green again. Pass can you slow down? Not to blend. Okay. I hope I answered your question. Okay. Now what we're going to do is um, we're going to wait a little bit for the background to be dry. And I'm just going to walk you through or talk you through what this um, bottom part is going to be. Okay. So the bottom part is actually made out of a dark green. So at first, this is a dark green shade. So now you know how to make green. It's a blend of yellow and blue together. But the reason why this green is different than the green we created here, which was the lime green, is that this guy is really dark. So in that case, when you're creating this green, you have to use almost a 50-50 ratio between the yellow and the blue. So you blend them together in a way that you know that the blue is stronger and a bit darker. We're obviously going to create it. I'm just, gonna, I'm just walking you through um, uh, right now the steps. So we are going to cover all of this area with that dark green color, okay? We're going to wait a bit for that to get dry. Meanwhile, we are going to create the same shade of lime green that we had. Because you can see here, if you look at it really well, it's not just the dark green. You can see that there's streaks of other colors, either it's the white or the yellow or even the red ones, a bit of orange. So there's other lines that are allowing us to give this highlight feeling from the moon. And that's what gives this rich kind of highlight in the center area. So it's really cool if we can create these other colors on the side. And by using our small brush, we can kind of go over it in the center area and highlight them, okay? So that is what we will be doing as the second step. After that, once that is dry, um, once that is dry, what we can do is we are going to plant the trees. So planting the trees is the other layer of the painting, which I told you at first that we have the background and then you have the trees. Okay, so what we will be doing is planting the trees. And as a very, very last step, we are going to be adding the foliage on top. Yeah, cool. I think we're good now uh, with what we have. So we can actually start, yeah. We can actually start doing the green on the bottom, okay? So now we know how to make green. It's blending yellow and blue together. But I said that this green is darker. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a bit more of the blue on my brush. Look at how much I use. And that is what's gonna go in my yellow right here. And I'm gonna blend them together. Okay, look at that green already. It's really nice and it's a forest green, exactly what I want. And this is a really chill exercise because I'm gonna cover literally all of it with this shade. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a bit darker. There's literally no magic in it. You grab the darker green I'm running out of yellow. I'm going to just put a bit more yellow here so that it doesn't just look like blue. Make sure that it looks like a dark green. So you need yellow and blue to create it. Okay, this is the yellow. I also tend to do something which I might, um, yeah, for sure I can show it. Okay, green and blue. Okay, let's do it again. So I put some yellow and blue together. So I'm grabbing blue paint here, certain amount of blue, and then I'm grabbing yellow paint from here. Like I was telling you, it's almost like a 50-50 proportion between the two. So that is going to give you a very nice deep forest green. There you go. Very nice shade. If you want it to be darker, you can add more blue to it. If you want it to be lighter, you can add more yellow to it. But I personally like this shade. Look at that, it's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so once you're happy with the shade, you can cover all the bottom area of your painting. One thing you need to be careful, have the brush a little bit wet, so damp, so not completely dry, and try to trace the line of um, under the moon, like basically the horizon line, and try to make it as straight as you can. If the brush is too, too dry, it's not gonna allow you to make a nice straight line. So you need to have some water in the, in the brush so that the line is very nice and very smooth. 
And it's okay if it's not completely straight. We don't really care. The whole point is we want a horizon line. Even if it's a bit shaky, I mean, if you go and check the horizon, it's literally not super flat, okay? So it's good if it has a bit of human touch to it and it wobbles, it doesn't matter. That's what makes us different than robots, right? So I'm going over it a, a couple of times. So it doesn't need to be great on the first shot. It's, it's really okay. So take your time. It's okay. You can take your time. Yeah, we have two more spots in the class if anybody from the YouTube channel wants to join. Okay, cool. So then I'm going to kind of paint the whole area. So this is what I'm going to do. Just hold on one second. I'm going to try something. Okay, and then I'm going to cover the whole green um, with the bottom of the painting. Okay, so all of this is gonna become my dark green. Hello. All right, let me move that back again. Okay, so I'm literally covering all of it. There's no secret to it. There's no technique in it. I'm just moving the brush left and right and making sure that it literally covers all the area. There you go. It could be smooth, it could be a little bit um, rough and tough. It's, it's both of it, both of, both of them are okay. And if the soil, like I told you at first, it's completely okay if it has a bit of a rough feel to it. What we will be doing next is adding something that's really cool and I really love it. And I told you in the beginning, it's the highlights right there, okay? But you need to be careful because the paint we put underneath is not dry. It's not yet dry. And if you go with the white brush and try to put it on top of this, it's not gonna stay there. So there's a way to holding the brush to make sure that the paint kind of is left on the green, even if the green is not dry, okay? And I'm gonna show you what the technique is. So I'm gonna go and grab my small brush. I have a round one right here. This is the one I'm gonna be using, okay? Make sure that it's very clean. If you don't have a clean water, you can refill it. I have another tank right here, which I'm going to be using. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna think about what are the colors that I'll be using, okay? So there's like I told you three different shades, or I could say four, four different shades. One, we have white. For sure, there are lines that are white, and it's very cool if some of them blend with the green, we're gonna go over it and then have some that don't blend with the green. Second shade we have is the yellow. The yellow shades are what replicate the color of the moon, so it's really nice. We're gonna also have them on the trunks of the tree, so it's very much needed, very important to have the yellow ones. Third shade is a bit of an orangish kind of shade. So the orange is with the same brush that has the yellow. You can go and grab a bit of red on the side, very, very tiny amount, just like you have right here. And you're gonna do other lines as well. So all these colors that I'm telling you don't necessarily need to be fully uh, filling this area, but it's like these nice little streaks of random lines that are going to give you this beautiful, rich highlight in the middle area. Fourth color is red. Once you're happy with the little orange add-ons that you put, I didn't put that many. See, I have one line here, a couple of there. I'm gonna go and we're going to do the red one. So what we're gonna do is the same strokes we have, just add some touches with the pure uh, red color, okay? So in that way, we're gonna have filled the whole uh, bottom area. All right? Okay, so which colors do we need? Okay, so if you feel that it's too fast, um, yeah, so what's going to happen is this class right here is going to stay on YouTube. It's very good that you're actually telling me. This class is going to stay on YouTube. So if you're willing to relook at things afterwards once we're done with the two hours yeah i know it's very fast but we have to make it happen in two hours okay we're halfway through it we need to finish the soil and then we have half of the class to actually plant the trees and put the foliage 
take your time. Don't rush too much. I'm, I will be giving the explanation again. And like I said in the beginning, the link to the YouTube stream will remain in YouTube. So you can even, once the class is over, go over the steps and you can actually uh, redraw it by yourself. All right, we're cool with that. So what are we going to do right now? Um, we will be doing the little streaks that we mentioned a while ago. So I start with white. I'm gonna do these lines from the lightest to the darkest color, which are first white, then yellow, then orange, and then red. It's four shades that are really close to each other. So it shouldn't be really hard to maneuver around. I'm gonna start with the white. Before my paint is too dry, I'd like to have these little lines. So I put the white with the tip of my brush. See, I held it like really perpendicular, okay? I told you I was gonna tell you how I did it. So I'm gonna really show you closely. So I grabbed my brush, it's a clean one, and I poured and I took the paint with the tip of the brush. And I'm holding the brush almost vertically. Look at this camera. I'm holding the brush almost vertically to the canvas. So I'm not really uh, putting it like, I'm really having the tip of the paint just go on the on the canvas. So like doing little lines, random ones, huh? not necessarily in the same place and not necessarily in the same style. Some are longer, some are shorter. Some will blend more than others, okay? It depends on how many times you actually move the brush left and right. So this is how I'm gonna do um, the white shades of the highlights. Once you're happy with how many you put, you don't need uh, you don't need to put yet. Okay, can I use? Yes, of course, of course you can. Great, Shana. So uh, of course you can use you can use oil, and I think it's gonna show on top of the of the acrylic. The second color that I'll be grabbing is yellow. So I'm gonna get some yellow on my brush, and again in the same way I did the white, I'm gonna add some yellow highlights. Very nice and gentle, not necessarily in the same place and not necessarily too much of them, just to see some highlights, okay? Kind of blending it sweetly with the dark green that I have at the bottom, very nice and gentle. I can raise the highlights a bit on some areas and kind of keep it very relaxed on others. So the idea is just to give it a, to give it a small, something in the middle there you go that's my additional yellow add-on there you go i wouldn't recommend pushing it too much to the sides although it's a good idea like to to add the gradients to the borders but the more you go to the borders make sure that the colors are darker okay because what happens is we go in the deep forest on the borders, but whereas in the middle, we really want the shades to be lighter. So I'm actually going on top of the highlights in the middle. Again, adding more yellow. The next color is orange. So I will go and I don't have red yet on my palette. I didn't add it. I'm gonna add it right now. And by adding red, I'm gonna be able to create some orange color. I'm gonna put quite a good amount because we will be using it also afterwards for the trees and for the foliage. So I will grab a tiny amount of red and put it on a corner. And by blending it with my yellow, I'm going to create this orange. You all know how to make orange, right? Yeah, you all know the secret. It's red and yellow together. Okay, so red and yellow together will give you orange. Just want to shake if you're in my way. Okay, yeah, no other question. I thought somebody was asking something. So I'm grabbing some yellow and I'm blending it with the red. And that is giving me a very nice orangey shade that I could be using later on. But that I can also be, um, I'll do that. And that I can be also using right here. So there you go. It also blends with the yellow, also blends with the green. How we did the grass, um, Jade is asking how we did the grass. So the grass color and the base of this was dark green. How did we do the dark green? We blended two colors together, yellow and, um, we blended, sorry for that. We blended yellow and blue. We just made sure that the proportion of yellow and blue together was quite 50-50 because we wanted our shade of green to be kind of dark. 
okay? So you make sure to add a good amount of blue and red and blend them together. Right now we're going over the highlights of our little forest and adding them mainly in the center of the canvas. So we're not really going at the sides. And if we go at the sides, we're kind of making sure that it remains dark because we don't want everything to be lit because if you light up everything, then nothing is lit anymore, okay? So there you go. So I've added my white, I've added my yellow, I've added my orange. What I will have to add now is red, straight from the palette. We have a little question. Mine looks bad. Don't worry too much. Just keep on building it. I'm sure it's going to look great at the end. And by the way, all that we're doing right now is going to be covered a lot by the trees. So don't bother too much about, um, about how perfect it is and how, uh, how visible those colors are. A lot of it is just an effect. It's a texture we're adding on something bigger that we're building. I just added my red, kind of like adding a lot of it. So once you look at the final blend that you did, if you find it too much, what you can do is always go back on, on, top, of the, on top of the green and kind of add uh, another shade of green on top of it. So basically it's like adding, you could still, by the way, recreate some green, which I'm doing right now and kind of go over it. just like that in order to kind of dim back down some areas that we find too um too bright but it's also going to help blend the colors together where did you reach kayani i think kayani is saying we're going too fast where are you now because i cannot see your painting what stage are you in can you type that down so that the blends are perfectly done what I'm doing is going over the green with the green color. I'm kind of lightly with some water going over the all the work of the light shadows that I did. And it it's nice because it kind of brings all the colors together and blends them better. Okay. I'm kind of happy with what we've got. Looks like a nice um, mix of colors. I've got the highlights. And there we go. Okay, good. If you're at the floor, which means the forest, then we're at the right color. Okay, so now we're going to wait a bit. So we added all the colors. Now I'm gonna write down here what are the other colors that we use. I've used for the highlights, highlights. I'm gonna write it down here. White, yellow, orange, and red. So these are the colors that I used for anyone that wants to uh, do them. And it's okay if it's not fully finished because we're gonna again do and do retouches afterwards. So once we're done with the trees and the whole painting, we're gonna come back to this floor or forest area like the, the soil and the grass and we will be adding some more, some less. We can retouch it as much as we want, okay? Cool. If you're happy with your painting, I'm happy too. <laughs> Very nice. So what is our next step, guys? Our next step is one of the coolest thing that is ever possible is us planting trees. We're going to be planting these nice little trees so that they can grow in the forest. And once we're done with the painting, they can maybe continue growing and become a bigger forest. So the technique that we will be using is called press and release the brush. I'll be showing it to you on the palette first because it's a little bit of a technique, uh, a tricky one. But once you learn it, we're going to use it also in a lot of our classes. So it's kind of very useful for you to get a hang of it and kind of practice afterwards. So let me show you what press and release looks like. If you're doing something else, it's okay. You can just stop for a moment and just do it back. The color of the trees that we have is brown. So our color is brown. I'll explain to you later on how brown is made and everything. But right now I wanna show you the press and release technique, okay? So I'm gonna do it with just about any color. Yeah, I can wait. Just listen to the information, it's okay. And I'll be waiting for you. I'm not gonna go faster than it. So I just will move forward with the information so that other, people's, that other people that are already done can catch up. 
But you can take your time. I'm going to explain the same thing over and over again. And I have this tendency to kind of recap everything. So no worries, I'm not going to let you down. How is this press and release technique made? All you need to do, even if you're not done with the soil, with the highlights, with everything, all you need to do is just take one moment of pause and just look at what I mean by press and release, okay? So look at this piece of paper, okay? Imagine that this is a lion and this is the, where the tree is going to live, okay? I'm gonna place it here. When I load my brush with paint, just like this, okay? That is enough for me to kind of kind of push the color um, all the way to the top. So I load my brush with enough water and paint, just like this. So the brush is not wet. It's not sorry, it's not dry. So the brush has to be wet enough and loaded with paint. Okay. So it's different than the technique that I told you here for these highlights. We're not going to do little strokes. We want to have a big loaded brush. So the technique is about pressing the brush and then as you go up, you release the brush, okay? I'm gonna hold it closer to the camera so you can see. When I say press, is literally pressing all the load of the paint on the piece of paper. No, it's not gonna work on top, so I'm gonna put it back down. You press just like this. And as you go up, you kind of release the brush. So I'm kind of letting the brush float back up. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. No, you don't use this paper. This is just for me to show you how we're gonna do it. Don't put any paper. So you load the brush with some paint and you kind of press. And then as you go up, you kind of release the brush, okay? I am using Baby Bear, so the small brush, okay? So I'm using Baby Bear, so the small brush, because it gives me the capability to kind of become also very thin at the top. So what I did is I loaded it and I pressed the brush at the bottom. And as you go up, you kind of release the brush from the canvas. So it remains really thin and nice and sweet. Of course, I can go back on top of the strokes and kind of make the tree thicker or kind of add uh, more depth to it. It's up to you. If you find it too thin, then you can pull it more on top and add more line and more depth to it. But the technique of the press and release works in this manner. Another motion that is really important is, yeah, I'll be answering to you just one moment. You have to press the brush and when you go up, you have to swing it a bit. So it goes left and right. See how it moves? This is how it moves. Flat brush can work. Okay. Yes, flat brush can work. And I'm gonna tell you how it works. So this is with the round one, okay? I'll be showing you how it works with the flat one, just right here. If I use a flat brush instead of a round one, look at this, I'm gonna tell you what color we're doing. I'm just showing the technique right now. We're gonna be creating brown in a moment. This is how we're going to do it with the flat one. I'm showing you both. If you have a flat or if you have a circle, it works with both. Flat brush loaded with paint, you press, and when you're going up, you can tilt the brush. So you rotate it a bit so that the line becomes thin. There you go. You can even tilt it a bit further. And there you go. You can continue with a straight line. So this is how we're going to build the trees, OK? So it works basically with both. Whether it's a flat or a round brush, there's no problem. The color we will be using to create the trees is brown. And brown is one of my favorite colors to create. It's not an easy one, but I'm sure we can pull it up. Brown is made out of three colors. This is the round brush. Yeah, I will do it again. I will show again. I will show it a million times until uh, you all are ready to kind of roll it on your own. We're gonna create br brown color and brown is made out of red, blue, and yellow. I have them all three here. The idea is to mix them in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna get, you have to make a good amount of it. Okay, I'm gonna use the yellow. Oh, I had, Okay, I'm gonna grab some yellow here. It's already a bit greenish and I'm gonna add a bit of red. And I'm gonna add a bit of blue in it. So it's the blend of the three primary colors that kind of give you brown. It doesn't look good yet, but if you continue blending them together, 
you're gonna see how brown is born. Okay, this brown is a bit too bluish. So what I will do to make it less blue, I'm gonna add more yellow. So it's as if you're cooking this brown color to perfection and to reach the color that you like. If it's too cold, so it's too bluish, it means you have to add more red. And look at that brown. It's becoming a warmer shade of brown. There you go. Once the shade of brown is warmer, it's closer to the red. It means I've added more red. And I actually like it with a little bit of more red. So then you add even more red. And there you get a nice warm shade of brown. I'm going to show you again now how to do the press and release, obviously, because we created the brown shade now. And I'm going to do it directly on the canvas. Now I'm happy with my brown color. OK, let's do this. So you grab a bit of water and you grab a little bit of the brown shade you have. The idea with the trees, just so you can see at the positioning, they're kind of on both sides of Mr. Moon in the middle. But one very important thing is, as we're getting closer to the moon, the trees are becoming smaller and smaller. So you will need to use either the tip of your brush or even a smaller brush in order to create these. And you don't need to do press and release for these guys. You need press and release for these big ones, but these small ones, you can just trace them very nicely. So we're gonna draw the trunk first and then the branches are gonna come out of it very naturally. Let me show you how. I'm gonna start, oops. I'm gonna start right here where my blob of paint just fell. I loaded my brush with paint and I'm gonna do press and release. I'm gonna press the brush and as I'm going up, I will release the brush like this. I didn't have enough water on my brush. So look at how it kind of granulated. I'm gonna go and grab a bit of more water and my brown and go over it again. It's okay, nothing is going to happen. In the contrary, it's gonna actually fix the tree. So you press and go over this area and you do it again and you kind of fine tune the release. There you go. Press and release. You need a good amount of water so that the, the brush kind of flows on top of the paint, especially that the paint underneath is really dry. So you will need a good amount of water. So your brush has to be quite wet so that the trees kind of swing on top of it. Okay. I'm using the baby brush. I mean, baby brush for me might be medium for you, but this is the one I'm using. Okay. This is the size of my brush. I'm going to do it again. So load my brush with water and load my brush with paint. I'm going to do another tree on this side this time. Press. And as you go up, you are going to release the brush very smoothly, just like that. There you go. I'm gonna show you again how it looks like if we're doing it with the flat brush, because if some of you are asking it, I'm doing it with the brown. Okay. So I'm doing it with the flat brush. There you go. I'm gonna create the same brown and Grab both areas of my flat brush. There you go. I'm gonna press. And as I go up, I'm tilting the brush a bit and I'm swinging it all the way to the top. And this is how I create the tree. Now that I'm happy with my tree shapes, if you're kind of cool with what you've got, you're gonna be adding the branches to it because that's what the beauty of the trees is all about. How do we add the branches? You grab the small, uh, brush. I'll tell you how to do brown in a bit. You have to blend. I'm going to write the recipe of brown right here. Brown is made out of yellow, blue, and red. Okay? So once you blend them all together, you're sure to actually get brown. The branches are done with the smaller brush. And the smaller brush in the middle or at the top, you can kind of do really smooth lines very tiny ones that go from the top of the head of the tree and that kind of fly all the way up like this okay can do one more like here you can add as many branches as you want you don't need to have one or two it's literally to your flavor whatever you feel like doing i didn't do the small trees yet i'm going to show you of course how to do them just hang in there with me we're going to get there Okay, so I'm also going over the brown, brown br branches 
and the trunk to make sure that the color is looking good everywhere. Um, how many trees should we make? It's literally how big your canvas is and you spice it up in whichever way you want. But what I'm gonna be showing you is the trees that gets closer to the, to the moon area have to be thinner and very, very small. So this guy is still big, so I'm gonna grab him all the way to the top. But if I get really close to the moon, you don't need to pull the trees to the top anymore. You can kind of stop them before that and go like really, really tiny, which I'm gonna show you right now. I'm just gonna add a couple of branches here. And there you go. We have another nice tree that we planted. You can fix the bottom part to be kind of squarish and sit well on the forest ground. I'm gonna fix all of them, okay? They have to look solid and like well seated because the brush was really round. So now I'm gonna do the smaller ones. Look at how it looks. It's almost the same technique, but I'm using it. Um, I'm using it on the on the horizon line. So I'm gonna build them from here, like a nice tiny little tree. Again, the technique is the same. It's very thin at the top, but it's thicker at the bottom. There you go. I have one tree right here. You can do even very, very small ones. I'm gonna do one right here. Nice and gentle, very subtle and nice little branches. See how it looks? So it's really up to you on uh, how many trees you need to add. My only advice to you is to actually go smaller as you get closer to the moon, smaller and thinner, thinner branches. And also one more thing is uh, you don't need to bring them all the way to the top because when you're closer to the moon, it's kind of giving this nice perspective to the branches. So you kind of want to stop it before that so that it's, the branches can overlap. Look at that. They can overlap. They can go on top of one's trunk from one to the other. It's very nice because it makes it look very natural and very foresty so you don't forest is not organized. Like it's not like I have two branches here, five there. So it's literally whichever way you like it. I'm gonna add one more very thin one right here. Half of it is can be going out of the canvas. What are the questions? The brown color, I just wrote the recipe for all of you in the group. It's made out of yellow, blue, and red. I don't know how to make the brown. I made my branches fat. <laughs> it's okay if the branches are fat, you can make them slim again by grabbing another branch and making it go very thin the, it's delicate to kind of hold the brush with the tip it's not an easy exercise and the more you practice the more uh, um the more smooth the, the smoother it will become and the more fluid your lines will be it's not an easy thing it, it requires a lot of practice to make very thin lines so it's really cool if if you kind of um, are able to do it already uh, all the way to here. So I'm gonna be showing, um, I'm gonna be showing to you how, um, how we're doing the small trees again. Cause some of you are asking me, so I'm gonna be doing uh, where do I pluck that tree? Blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna put him here, hidden between these. Ah, I have a drop of water right here. I'm gonna clean it. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna be adding a little tree right here because I like these very thick forests. It's exactly the same technique, but you just need to make a smoother line and very smooth branches so that it kind of looks very natural and they work together with the big ones. So the idea is for every tree, um, for all the trees to look like they're in one forest. So the technique is the same. You do one trunk and then you add the little branches, okay? But as you go closer to the, to the moon, I'm gonna do a very, very tiny one right here. I feel like making one. So I'm just gonna do one very small one right here. It's a super subtle, small, little, little itsy bitsy tiny tree. You don't need to add a lot of branches, you know, you can add three branches or you can add one, 
it's really up to you. Okay. So um, now that we've done the branches, what we need to do is, uh, is to put the highlights on these trees, okay? The idea here is at the center, you have the moon. And the moon is radiating, it's giving light all around it. So what are we gonna do to make sure that we see this light? We're gonna grab yellow and add some highlights with yellow. Not only yellow, actually, sorry. You're gonna be using yellow with white. Why? Because brown is not yet dry as a color. And if we put yellow straight away on the brown, it's gonna to blend together and it's gonna look very mushy. In order for the color to pop out, and kind of stay on top of things. Very cool, I'm not happy. So if you put some white, then you're gonna be able to kind of see the highlight. I'm gonna show you how the highlight is made. So I have white and yellow blended together right here, okay? I'm gonna grab it and do it in the little corner right here. It's okay if it has a bit of green, it kind of blends all in together. And for the trees that are on the left, we're going to be using the highlights only on this side. So the sun is hitting here. So these thin lines are only coming on one area. And on the trees that are right here, we're going to be highlighting only this side. So basically the left side for the right trees, the right side for the left trees. This is how we're gonna do it, okay? We're gonna kind of do a stroke. It doesn't need to be a straight stroke. It can be just like breaking stroke because it's just a tiny drop of highlight. And you don't need to put it everywhere, okay? You can turn it off at some points. And it's okay if it blends with the brown one. It gives a bit of rough texture because that's what makes it look like a tree trunk, actually, because tree trunks are not smooth and silky, right? So I'm adding these highlights to my left trees, but on the right side. So I'm making sure that light comes from this area. Okay, hello, hello people joining us. And then on this side of the painting, we'll be adding the other highlights. So for these guys, this is where the highlight is gonna go. So very small brush and a little drop of paint, I'm just dancing with the brush. There's no technique or no idea behind it. It's just grabbing the brush, the tip of the paint and just tracing a small line on each side of the tree. You can see already how the texture looks really cool right here. You don't need to make a perfectly straight line. All you need to do is add some light. So add some yellow to the branches. So right side for the left trees and left side to the right trees. Sometimes I'm stopping the stroke and it's okay. It's just about um, having it on and off. So it doesn't necessarily need to be everywhere because basically the the branches are overlapping, so this highlight is sometimes being turned off because there's another branch on top of it. So it has to look a bit natural. And even if your brown is not fully dry, I really like the technique when the brown kind of blends in with this highlight. It gives it even more of a natural color. So I'm adding these highlights here and adding more right here. There we go. Still have my little trees to light up because they're really close to Mr. Moon. So we want that highlight to show even on them. And I have one tree left right in the back that I'm gonna be lighting up. There you go. All right, and I think I'm happy with my highlights. So see how this effect is also affecting the composition because at the same time, it kind of gives this depth to the picture, which we didn't have in the beginning. It gives a roundness to the trees. So it gives me the feeling that my trees are more round. Uh, it also gives me a sense of lighting. It teaches me where light is coming and how it's lighting the trees. And it also gives me a good sense of perspective and gives more emotion to the forest that we're building. Okay. So I grabbed some yellow and white and I made small lines, like I was saying, slight lines on the right side of the left trees and on the left side of the right trees. So basically the areas that are closer to the moon are becoming lit. That's what, how you need to think it. The closer to the moon, the lighter you become, okay? 
one thing that we need to do now next is to put the shadows the same way we have light coming from the moon there is shadow dropping shadow they call it drop shadow on the trees so they're not just standing and floating because right now they look like they're a little bit floaty so for them to kind of live on this forest and have some depth and weight we need to add some shadow at the bottom and our shadows are made out of blue okay so just blue color you can even blend it a bit with the brown but just blue by itself is already i think dark enough it has to be the darkest shape of the whole painting you're going to trace diagonal lines look at the real camera so on the original one you're going to trace like diagonal lines coming from the trees to the back you don't necessarily need to follow this line all the way to the outside you don't need to touch it you can just stop it somewhere through but you can add these lines and you'll see how uh, how more grounded the trees are going to look. So you start basically at the bottom of the tree and you kind of pull the brush with the blue paint. You pull the brush, you look at the moon, okay? The moon is hitting the, the light from here. So I'm gonna have my line just do nice little strokes just like this, okay? So this is how I added drop shadows on one of my trees. I'm gonna be adding drop shadows on this guy as well. So I make sure that I trace the line at the bottom of my tree first, to kind of make sure that the stroke is filled. And then I do these little lines from the bottom of the tree to the border. It's okay if it looks unfinished and raw. Again, it's okay for the roughness of color because it's a jungle, right? It's a forest. Nothing is very smooth and, and polished and perfected. Okay. So there you go. I think it gives, um, it gives a nice little, <laughs> the color of the shade uh, of the shade of the shadow is brown. Brown, sorry, and blue. So I had a bit of excess of brown, I mixed them together, but originally, sorry, it was just blue color because blue is dark enough. But if you have some brown mixed to it, it's gonna bring them together quite well. And you need to do that for all the trees. So make sure the lines are kind of coming together and even if there's a tree coming in the middle, look at that, I'm following it and continuing it after the line. So there's a tree right here. I'm not gonna go on top of it with my shadow because it's a shadow and it's on the floor. I will just stop the line and I will continue it on the other side of the tree just to make it a continuous effect. Just do that with every tree that you have. Even the small one, you can add a bit of shadow. It will make them look good. Okay. So I'm adding it to the left side of the trees as well, because we shouldn't forget there's trees on both sides. Just make sure you don't forget them all and have all the drop shadows covered. And here we are. Now that all the drop shadows are covered and we like the gradients, we are kind of done with the bottom part of our painting. Somebody is asking if we have a class tomorrow. I wish I had classes every day of the week <laughs> but our next class is not tomorrow it's going to be next week like i told you the theme of next week's class is going to be i love you mama because of mother's day event so i'm gonna leave it a surprise uh, <laughs> i'm gonna leave it a surprise uh, on how this is gonna look um yeah so next class is next Friday again, two to four. No, I'm not done. Don't leave. I'm not done. So I'm done with the drop shadow. I'm just answering people's question until everybody's done. So next step is for us to add the foliage on top. Very important, okay? It looks red, but it's not just red. It's an illusion. There's many colors involved. And the reason why we need to add those colors is because our background is quite dark, okay? We have blue, we have green. And if we don't blend them in the way that I'm going to actually give you the recipe, then the, the red is not going to be as vibrant as the red that you're seeing right here. Okay. First thing you need to know is you can use any brush. You can use the medium one or the small one to make these. The technique is called dab dabbing and it's very, very easy. You just need to dab dab the brush. Basically, you don't need to think about anything and just have fun making little dots all around it. One thing you need to keep in mind, I've filled it only on the upper part. Don't go too down. So it's like one third of the upper part of the canvas and that's more than enough. 
What are the colors that are involved now is the secret to making it very nice and red. Obviously there is red into it, there is red involved, but what is more important um, to do is to add white into that red. White into the red is going to make the red color very uh, vibrant and it's going to make it very intense. So when I say add white, I don't mean the pink that I have right here. In this red that you're seeing even, on the areas that are pure red, there is white in them as well. That is why it's popping out. So on this red area, the white is very tiny, very minimal. But as a second shade, you can go heavier on the white and add more into it and kind of create these pinkish little dots. There is no secret to it. This area in the middle, just like we did it right here, has to be the one that has more light and lit. So for that, you need to have more pinkish shades and yellowish shades, which is the next color I was going to mention to you right in the middle. All right. So let's do this. Let's get into that. For this part of the exercise, I will be using my um, Mama Bear, which is the medium brush that I have. So roughly, it's a flat brush. There you go. It's a flat brush, nice and sweet, very easy to use. And the red paint is here, okay? I'm gonna show you what I meant by adding a bit of white in the red. Just one moment, I'll be answering all your questions once I'm done with the explanation. I'm gonna grab a bit of white on the corner right here. Don't worry, this black is dry. It's from an old painting. And I'm gonna be adding in my red a little drop of white. See, you don't see it. It's still very red, okay? And it's still very red, but at the same time, it's a more opaque red because it has that drop of white. And look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just dab dab these on top of my tree and filling it in. The idea is to fill in both corners and kind of add enough so that it's following the whole one third of the painting. One thing that's really cool though, is while you're doing this, you don't need to cover it completely. You can leave some empty areas because the trees are nice when they kind of show you what's going on in the background. So that's a nice trick to do. You don't need to cover all of it. You can kind of leave some uh, empty areas to, you know, to have the, 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 even the trunks of the tree show from, uh, from there, okay? So I'm running a bit out of wet red paint. I'm gonna just go and make more of that whitish red. Another information about the dab dabbing process, as you're going down, try to make the dots smaller. Same thing for the middle. As you're going down with it, like you can even go down all the way to here. Yeah, like I'm gonna add the dots so you can see until where I'm gonna dab dab. So you can do the dots all the way to here. Just make sure they get smaller and more subtle so that it doesn't look like very heavy on the painting. I'm gonna continue dab dabbing right here. It's a very fun and relaxing process. You don't need to think about anything. You don't need to think that the whole world is locked down and we're painting in our houses. <laughs> you don't need to think about anything. You basically just need to look at the paint, listen to nice music and just dab dab these out. All right. I think I've, I've given you the information. So not necessarily covering all of the area. You can leave some empty spaces. In the colors, I've integrated some white in my red so that it's opaque. You can also add some orange and yellow for the middle part. And the nice thing is once you're getting closer to the sun area, or sorry, to the moon area, just make sure that you have your dots become smaller. So it gives this perspective effect and that is it, okay? So continue dab dabbing. I'm gonna do mine as well. I'm gonna complete. I just wanna answer to a couple of questions. Are we going to dab dab it with a sponge? No, not with a sponge this week. There is white, dark red. Exactly. Okay. Everybody's aligned. Perfect. I thought there was some questions. I'm going to be adding a bit more red because I'm running out of red. Um, and don't forget in the middle shades, you have some red and you have some orange as well. So orange is made out of red and yellow. So don't, uh, don't forget that you can always blend them on the side of the painting if you are afraid to actually go directly on the canvas. Sometimes I do it straight ahead. Like I'm really willing to have a very strong highlight. So I grab the yellow and I go straight ahead on the reds that I put. 
And because my red is not dry enough, then it's going to give me the orange shades. You know what I mean? Like the orange shade gets created while I'm actually dab dabbing, dab dabbing on the canvas, which is also a cool technique. But if you're not feeling confident enough and you're like, oh my God, how is this orange going to look? Then you'd be better off doing it on the side of your palette and then blending them in. I personally uh, love doing that because it kind of gives me a rough uh, rendition of the of the effect of, of the texture. Don't forget to blend the red with white. Okay, right here. The reason why I'm saying that is when it gets dry, the paint tends to go darker. You can already see some of the areas right here. I have put red, but they're going to become really dark and they're going to completely disappear. And I don't want that to happen. So what we want is to constantly add white to it so the red becomes vibrant and remains like that most importantly for those of you who are asking if this is the final step of the painting yes it is are we done with it no we're not because i'm going to finish it as well and i'm going to show you how it looks like even on my canvas when it's done and i'm going to also do one nice thing at the end is i'm going to peel off the scotch tape all around it which is honestly my favorite part ever be it putting the, the scotch tape or even pulling it from the canvas is like my moment of joy i know it sounds silly but it's really fun to actually see what i've been building for like the past two hours completely framed and finished in a moment of one scotch tape peel all right so i'm adding a bit on the side what i would like to do as well before you guys leave me is take a group picture. It's a tradition that I have and I save those group pictures. And one day I'll be posting all of them together. So, um, so yeah, if you can stay and hang in there a bit longer so that we can have that group picture taken, that will be awesome. So that we, we remember um, who was here on this forest class. Okay, so don't forget to add more highlight in the middle. I'm going a bit heavier on the red in the middle so that I'm making sure that the light aspect is actually there. Constantly dab dabbing it. See, it's really coming together quite well. I'm very happy with the results. Um, I think the idea of the red is really maintained if you kind of added, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know it's really satisfying and very much fun. It's the best part of painting. Like, honestly, you don't think about anything. You just grab a brush and you just do the dab dabs. You can also add white. Look at that. I'm actually grabbing white and directly just going on the, on the canvas with the white paint. So it's also layering it with some white. It also adds some richness to the painting. You know, like it adds different levels and you don't need to do it everywhere. You can have it only in the center or, um, on certain areas. Don't overdo it. It's nice to keep some areas empty, okay? Um, so don't overdo that. So it's really cool if some of the places are kind of left uncovered and the blue is coming out from those areas. What are you at? Thank you, everyone. Okay, can we paint it like a straight flower? You can do it whichever way you want. It's your painting. You're most welcome, Kimaya. Um, so I'm just, what time is it? Oh, you have another five nice good minutes to dab dabbing things. I'm just gonna remind you about a couple of things I was saying in the beginning. Yes, I am using acrylic paint. Um, so first off, I would really be happy if you can send me pictures of you painting and you in your setup, uh, be it with your family or wherever you were seated, watching me on a big screen or on a phone. I would really love to see what was your setup when you were painting. So send me as many pictures as you want. I'm gonna create an album and I'm gonna put all of them in there. And the album will be on Facebook. So you can actually go there and see what everyone is painting. That's one. Second thing is you will be receiving an email, which is me thanking you for being part of today's class. And also, um, and also in the email, you're going to be uh, filling in a feedback form for me to know how your experience was of the class. But you will also have next week's registration available. So if ever you want to register, the link will be there um, for you to directly click and take part of next week's class. 
another thing is I will, like I said, put the Facebook link for you to see the album. If you're po posting pictures, uh, tag us or uh, add us on, on your picture so I can actually find the pictures that you are posting or else I cannot see them. So make sure to tag us and it will also allow other friends of yours to see and maybe join us for the coming class, which will be really cool. And what else did I want to say? Yeah, and for other people that you know want to join and um, couldn't make it to the Zoom link, because today literally five seconds after I opened the class, we had already uh, filled in with 100 participants. So Zoom doesn't take more than 100 people in. And that is already with an upgrade. So I would highly uh, advise you to go on the YouTube channel, which is as cool. And I hope you guys that are there enjoyed it just as much. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all we have for this week. Thank you so, so much um, for being part of the class. It's always a blessing for me to do what I love and sharing it with people that enjoy painting. And I really hope I get to see you again to our next class. So what I'm doing right now, cool. So what I'm doing right now, I'm going to be peeling. Um, I'm going to be peeling the painting, the, pe the painting uh, washi tape, which I had put in the beginning. So I'm going to slowly peel and look at that. Wow, that is the best thing on earth ever. If you don't have this uh, washi tape situation and you're on a canvas, that's even better. If you didn't do it this week, it's perfectly fine. Just try to grab a scotch tape for next week. Just make sure of one thing. If the scotch tape is a strong one, I have a technique for the paper not to be peeled. If the scotch tape is not a paper tape, just like this one right here, then you would be better off um, sticking it on your clothes before you actually put it on the paper. So you basically open the tape and kind of touch it on your clothes so that it, it kind of loses its strength. And once it's ready, you kind of put it on the paper. Like I did right here, I pulled half of it is on the paper and the other half is on my table. So that gives me a nice border frame to the canvas. There you go. And we have one last one. Yeah, normal tape works. Like I said, normal tape works. The only thing you need to do is kind of soften it a bit so it doesn't tear the paper apart. So it doesn't break it. Okay. And so we remove it. So now it's kind of even tearing this one because it's really strong. I'm gonna go on the other side and make it very softly so we're sure not to break things apart. And there we go. And here you have a nice finished product already framed and ready to be put on a wall. There you go. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed the class and great if you have washi tape even better what i will be doing right now is taking a picture so the group picture is going to be taken um yes we could use normal tape and like i said if you're using normal tape there's a technique which i will show you right now i'm very happy for your sweet words i'm reading you all and i'm going to see your painting so you grab a piece of the scotch tape and what you do you kind of stick it on your clothes it might look really awkward but in fact, it's peeling off some of the hair of the cloth, which is making the tape less strong. So if by making it less strong, you know for a fact that it's not going to tear your paper. But make sure once you put it on the, on the paper itself that you go over it with your nails so that it, the color or the water doesn't flow um, in. Okay, so we're going to go for the group picture, everyone. Are you ready? YouTube people, I love you all. I'm going to try to have you in on Zoom next week. So um, group picture, we're gonna go and do that right now. So what I will ask you all to do is to hold your paintings. Hello, everybody. Gorgeous people, wow, they look nice. So hold your painting right close to the canvas. 
just make sure that, sorry to the camera, I don't know what I'm talking. I think after two hours, I'm starting to become cuckoo. All right, just try to get as cool, as close to the camera as you can. Make sure that we see your face and the painting. You guys are super cute. Marikar, I'm waiting for you. I'm just checking everybody's there on all the pages. Victoria, wow, they look gorgeous. Okay, stay there. Do not move. Page number one, you're being taken into picture. Smile, cheese. Page number one, done, stay there. Big cheese for page number two. Whoever is hiding, come in and just show me the painting if you don't wanna show me your face. Cheese, everyone, hold it, hold it, hold it. Yay, stay there. Two more pages. Hang in there, we're almost done. Page number three. <laughs> Cheese, and the last one is right here. You guys, they look amazing. You're so good. I'm gonna have a quick look at your work. Hima, Anna, very nice. I cannot give all your names or else I will not be over in an hour, but very cool. Very, very cool. Bavishia, very nice. Roma, Nadine, Aria. Emma, Menakshi, Zara, Emily. Oh, you guys are so cute. Moira, Jovi, that's very nice. Hey, Jovi. <laughs> Who else do we have? Nabila. Wow, that is awesome. That's a scary forest. Sama, oh, you did it on an iPad. That is lovely. Good job, girl. Carla, Dana, good teamwork. Dalia, oh, nice boys, show me. Okay, cool. You guys were done. No, Norina, if you want to leave the class, you can leave the class at your own time. Aruhi, the very good, very good. Layan, Victoria, that was very nice. Christia, Gide, Talia. I saw all of your paintings. Amina, very good. Is that your sister hiding? Ah, okay. <laughs> Dalia, I saw Hussein. Very nice. I love how you did the lights. Yunia, okay. Good job, boys. Wow, almost as good as moms. Kim, Lana and Maria, great job. Zila, lovely colors. That is awesome forest, my girl. Marie Christelle and Emily. Super cool. Burchak or Burkak. I don't know how to say your name, but I love your forest. Leanna, Nadine, Ryan. Good job, Ryan. Woohoo! You've been waiting for an hour for me to see. Marika, great. Michal, impeccable. Border. Yara. Yara and the girls. Gaia, nee, you are here. Too fast, too fast. This is a great forest. Sadvika. Good job, girls. Don't forget to send me pictures. I want to see pictures of. You painting, Gaia. This is very nice. I love it. Puja. Carla, Wadha, Hima, you all holding your paintings. Shreya. Cool. Hope you had some nice music in your ears while you were painting. Guys, thank you all so, so, so much. I'm so happy um, to have met all of you. And I hope I'll get to see you again next week. And don't forget to send me pictures, tag us, follow us and like us. And like I said, anyone you know that couldn't join us on Zoom today, make sure to let them know that we will again be on YouTube for next week. YouTube people, I don't know who you were, but I hope to meet you face to face real soon. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. It was a pleasure for me to teach you all. Have a great afternoon and see you next week. Bye-bye.